Hi everyone. Welcome to Markdown Essentials course. I am Rang Gopal and I will help you to learn Markdown and how Markdown can be used at your regular activities. And I will be introducing standalone tools and online tools as well. I have been using Markdown for more than six years for various use cases such as taking notes, writing synopsis, minutes of meeting, technical or functional design documents, enhancement documentation, even for the presentation and many more use cases. This is the course outline. We'll start with tools that are required and then the basic Markdown syntax. After that, we will look at how Markdown can help us while writing the document. For that one, we will write a sample Markdown notes for this course itself. Later, we will go through Markdown online editors. In addition to this one, we will look at how GIT Hub uses the Markdown. And along with that, we will see how Markdown can help us to prepare presentations. For your information, the current presentation which I have been shared is made out of Markdown itself. These are the tools that I have been using for quite some time. I would recommend using Visual Studio Code as VS Code because it has many cool features. And I have been using VS Code for more than five years. I believe you would like it as well. I'll be using Windows Machine for this course. Please download the VS Code software from the internet or from the link which I have mentioned on this slide. Along with that one, we'll look at another tool which is Notepad++. Please download the Notepad++ software from the internet. And the link has been provided on the slide as well. I've been using Notepad++ for a very long time and I like the tool a lot. For Visual Studio, after saving the file as either .md or .markdown file, please use Ctrl Shift V as a shortcut to preview the markdown. In case of Notepad++, please use Ctrl Shift M. This is a shortcut for markdown viewer preview. Hi everyone. I have already installed VS Code on my local machine. You can download the VS Code software from the internet or the link which I have provided on this slide. Right now it is coming in white color. Sometimes it comes as a default which is dark theme. But I select the white theme and you can change it from the file preferences and color theme. Where you can select either the uh, dark theme or light theme. These are the list of themes that are available. I chose light visual studio which gives this white color theme. And regarding the extensions, I have not installed any of the custom extensions related to Markdown. If you need to install any custom extensions, you can go to the extensions tab and you can type Markdown. And these are the list of extensions that are supported. You can install any one of those. Select this one and install it. After that, you need to reopen the Visual Studio. Now, let's go back to our file explorer. I have already opened the file directory using the open folder and which was an empty folder. So that's why there are no files here. Now let's create one dummy document testing that markdown. As I mentioned, either you can create the markdown or dot md. I prefer markdown. So here it automatically identifies this is the markdown symbol. And then let's try something writing this testing header. After that, save it. After saving it, where can I see the markdown preview? So here is the button where you can click on it, or control shift P, or control K V. All these reflect to opening a preview window next to the source code like this one, by splitting window vertically. So right now, the markdown is working perfectly fine. This is not plus plus. And you might have installed by this time using the link that was provided on the slide or you would have downloaded from the internet. After opening the Notepad++, go to the plugins and see for plugins admin. 
Most of the times, this plugin will be installed along with the Notepad++. Let's try to install Markdown plugin. So on my local laptop, it's already been installed. That's why it may not be visible at the available tab, but you need to search over here at the search box, Markdown, and it will show you. Like here, it shows us a Markdown panel, but we need a Markdown Viewer++ plugin. So as it is already installed on my local box, so I'm showing it on my local environment. So go to the install tab and look for the Markdown Viewer++. So this is the plugin which I have been talking about. Once it's been installed, you will have a icon here at the toolbar or at the plugins, you will see Markdown Viewer++ and its own context. So you can see both of them. You can use either a Markdown Viewer++ or this tool button. Both will open another window in parallel or vertical to the source code. For example, here I'm writing, this is testing. And when I click on this one, it will open another window in parallel to this one. And here is our Markdown content. So not only this one, I can write next header. This is second header. And one way you can turn off, turn on. Sometimes this might work or might not work. Just click on preview button again. If we see this one, that means your plugin is working as expected. Let's learn about Markdown syntax. We'll start with the headers and then one after another. So headers, we have six varieties of headers like basic HTML. And all we need to do is prefix with hash and followed by our text. For example, this is a header. And if we want to show it as a header one, all I need to do is one hash and write the content. Example, hash, this is markdown syntax for headers. It shows as h1 tag. Not to create h2 tag or h3 or h4, all we need to do is we need to increase the number of prefixes. For example, in case of h2, I need to use two hashes. In case of h5, five hashes. And each one has its own styling. H1 will be the bigger and nicely shown. And H2, H3, H4, the size of the font will get reduced. And H6 tag font will be equal to paragraph font size. So as I mentioned, headers are six types. So header one, header two, header three, header 4, header 5, and header 6. Let's see how those can be created. On Visual Studio Code, I have creating a new file called headers.markdown and hit enter. Let's write header 1. As I mentioned in the slide, on the slide, headers will be created by prefixing hash. So let's say hash. This is header 1. And the next one, two hashes, this is for header 2. This is header 2. Next one, this is header 3. This is header 4. This is header 5. This is header 6 and save. In order to see the preview, you need to click on either preview button here or control shift V. Let's click on preview button. This is how it's going to be represented. By default, header 1 will have an underline or a horizontal line separation. But it totally depends on the tool. Sometimes we need to use separators while writing the content for better visibility or this content separation. In that case, we can use horizontal line. By using three hyphens, there are no tailing spaces. Then a horizontal line will be shown. Let's create a new file, say separator or horizontal line. 
I'll mark down. Let's say, let's create header two. This is sample. For horizontal line, you need to use three hyphens. Now write another header or paragraph text. This is sample paragraph. The horizontal separation line will be used for separating the content or sections or anything. Next, we have marked down text formatting. So we have multiple varieties. So the, we'll go with all basic formatting only. There are no advanced formatting supported here, but all basic would do our required job. So in case of bolding a text, we need to use either double hashtag or double underscore. Like I shown here, I am bold. I am hashtag, hashtag, bold, hashtag, hashtag would result. I am bold. Bold will be in bold style. It's the same for italics. In case of italics, we need to use single hashtag or single underscore. I strongly suggest to follow one pattern. I always follow using stars, asterisks. So in case of the bold, I use a double asterisk. In case of italics, it's a single asterisk. Next, we have strike through. Sometimes we need to show as a strike through as part of the style. So in such cases, we can use tilt symbol for strike through. For example, price is $99 instead of $100. So for that one, how I, we are going to write is price is tilt tilt dollar under tilt tilt. It will show as 100 as a strike through and we can write our own content which is supposed to be shown as $90 which would reflect as price is $90 while $100 is being striked up. Next, we have Blackboard. This will be used for saying purposes. For example, if you need to highlight it, or famous quotes that you are one, that you would like to paste it, or the formulas, or the most important factor. So such kind of notes, or such kind of content will be shown as Blackboard. All we need to do is use greater than symbol as a prefix followed by space and write the content that will be shown as a slogan or a blackboard. In our case, the slogan is doing is learning. So write greater than space doing is learning will be shown as as shown in the slide. Next we have code. Several places we need to show as a code particularly in case of technical representations or technical notes or technical specifications. So in such cases, we can use either inline code or code blocks. So if we want to show as an inline code, all we need to do is single back code for the content. In case of code block, we need to use three black codes and ending also three black codes. So the example which was shown here, single code, console log, this is testing, single code. That would represent as shown here. In case of the code block, we need to use three back codes and write the content technical code and close it up with three back codes. You can specify what kind of language that you are using. Most of the time, the syntax highlighting will be done like JavaScript. The code block which was showing on this slide is a JavaScript. So it has been notified as JavaScript. So backward, 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 JavaScript content and closing backward, backward, backward three times, which will show as shown in the slide. Now let's discuss about text formation. Let's create another file called format dot markdown and I'm writing as a plain text. This is bold. In order to get the bold, you need to use the double asterisk or double underscore. Both the results the same. Next. This is italics. 
for the italics you need to use single asterisk or single underscore both would result the same oh it's a typo italics next we have strike let's say price is hundred instead of the hundred i want to show it as 99 or 90 so let's say 99 so all you need to do is use double tilt it's a strike tool. now we have black code suppose we need to write any slogan like our slogan doing is learning here on the left side you will have a special notation saying that this is a black code next we have code so you can write code either inline or code block let's see inline this is a keyword so let's make this keyword as an actual keyword by using back code single back code if you see it on this tool the preview has been changed to a different color now let's learn about code block three backwards and another three backwards within the whatever you write is a code block let's say javascript so bar i is equals to zero so here there is no syntax highlation but most of the tools support syntax highlation as i have written as a javascript let's write javascript now the highlight has been changed let's write some more for i is equals to let's say j is equals to zero so i need to define what j plus plus and the condition is j less than i of course this loop never executes but just for saying i'm writing it so dot log this is testing so it's very beautifully highlighted the syntax and along with that you can use several other languages most of the languages are supported including diff for example in the same piece of code i want to show as a diff so in that case you can write diff and the piece of code and right now instead of this one i am planning to write something else so console.log here let's write title plus j so as this is the new line we need to use plus and this is the old line you need to use which is supposed to be removed so we'll define with minus so this is how it's going to be very useful next we'll go through the list there are two varieties of lists one is ordered and unordered and markdown supports nested lists as well and all text formatting which was discussed at previous slide will be used as part of the lists so let's go through ordered list in case of order list all we need to is we need to prefix with number dot any number for example one two or three or you can use one always in all such cases it will show in a proper order so for example if i write one dot one one dot two one dot three it will show as one one two two three three the number ordering is not important but it is suggest to maintain because if, if anybody looks at markdown it would be easier to understand next we have unordered lists in unordered list we have different ways that we can represent either using asterisk hyphen or plus but i strongly suggest to stick with one in my case i have used asterisk called asterisk ram asterisk lakshman asterisk siddha would represent as a list with bullets in case of nested list 
all we need to do is give two spaces in front of either one dot or asterisk. Both order list and unorder list, it's a similar. Equal number of spaces, let's say two spaces. Let's discuss about lists. Create a new file called lists.markdown and create a header, say lists and start creating the lists. So first I will start with order list. Order list will be given with number dot or number closing parenthesis so let me write this one two i'm using different syntax which is a parenthesis two and i'm using dot again so here three dot pick either of either dot or closing parenthesis will give the same result which is number one and you don't need to maintain the number you just use the number what i mean is for the same thing I would have written like 1.1, 1 1.1, 1.1. 1 .1, 1 .1. It automatically adds the number. Let's learn about unordered list. Let's correct these things as this is as a 4, this is 5, and this is 6. Let's write unordered list. In the unordered list, let's say names. So you need to use, as I mentioned, asterisk, iPhone or plus symbol. So I'm using asterisk and then let's say names. Ram. This time let's use iPhone. Sita. So at the end it result would be the same. But I strongly suggest to stick to one format which is either dots or parentheses. Because dots and parentheses can be used for ordered list and the stick hyphen or plus will be used for unordered list. I strongly suggest to stick to one of these as for your con convenience. I would use as one dot or two dot or three dot or in case of the unordered list, I use asterisks. Next, we have links. Links can be created very easily and the standard syntax is link title in square brackets and in within the parentheses you can provide the URL along with the title and title is optional. The title will be displayed when you hover over the content or over the link. So for example, if you need to write as a Google, this is Google and where the Google is hyperlink in that case within the square brackets use google and within the parentheses provide the actual url and along with that if you want to provide any tooltip or title you can provide that as well with double quotes always use double quotes to provide title and don't forget to give the space between the url and the title and as part of the links we can provide the link to other markdown files as well Either you can use absolute paths or relative paths. I strongly suggest to go with the relative paths. And in case of the self links, if you want to show the same content, in that case, you can use simple empty parentheses, which will take the link will be created for the same content or the same markdown file. Create a new file, links dot markdown, sample header, say links and here i can use links as inline or as a part of any other text so let's create as a list so i'm going to create link www.google.com or i can use as a special syntax as www.google.com and i need to give the a text so let's say Google search and we can give the title to this one as well. For example, if you take it, sorry, there is a typo. If you take it here, it gives the exactly the same way. And in, in case of the Google search, it gives the actual URL where it is going to be open or where it is going to be pointed to. 
But in case of the title, if you want to change that one, for example, let's write Yahoo search. So here, www. Let's say Yahoo.com. And the title can be given in the double course, say Yahoo search. And that's it, three dots. Now, if you hover it, here you will get a different one, which is a title. Instead of the link, actual link where it is pointing to, it uses the title which you mentioned. No need to write as a list, you can write it as inline text as well. For example, this is link to Google. So here I would like to say Google as a link. So let's convert it to www.google.com. So this is how it's going to be inline and this is as part of another. Next images. Images can be created you will as an inline text or add the separate one. In both the cases, the syntax is similar. Exclamatory mark, square brackets, and parentheses brackets. Square brackets, you provide the alternate text and the URL in the parentheses. You want to provide a tooltip in double quotes and ensure that you have given the single space between the URL and the tooltip. And as shown here, I have created inline image and few tools supports references as well. Reference means you can provide the link URL at some other place and you can refer the same. But basic markdown syntax will not provide. For our convenience, I have already downloaded a sample PNG file, which is a markdown itself, markdown logo. And I'm going to refer this image as part of our document. Let's create a new file images dot markdown header images and just like links you need to provide url to the image so in our case it would be in the current directory so let's say markdown dot png and just like similar to the links you need to provide an alternate text and a url where it needs to go now it acts as let's say alternate text will be markdown logo. For example, if this PNG is not available, then it will come. But right now it looks like a link. Yes, it is link syntax. But in order to convert it to image, you need to use exclamation. Now we got image substituted. For example, if image is not exist, let's say markdown 2, then the alternate text will be displayed. Let's correct it. And as I mentioned, you can use this as inline or as a bullet points as well. And if you hover it, you will not get anything because there is no hyper, um, no alternate. If you hover it, you will not get anything unlike a link. Let's add a title to that. So the title can be added. Let's correct it is as a, let's change it, this to as alternate to image and let's say dummy.png and let's use the actual image markdown.png and alternate text as markdown logo. And the title, as I mentioned, you need to give the in the double quotes. Let's say markdown logo. Now, if you hover it, you will get the title as a tool tip. Next, we have escape characters. Sometimes we need to show the special symbols which have been using in markdown syntaxes as in our content. So in that case, we need to use backslash to escape the character. For example, in order to show as a asterisk. If you provide an asterisk, it will take it as a list. So if you want to show it as an asterisk, just use backslash asterisk. I have listed here a couple of the symbols like asterisk, back quote itself, and hyphen plus this kind. Let's write 
escape dot markdown as i mentioned asterisk iphone plus these are all are hash these are all part of our markdown syntaxes if you need to write for some reason or to write it as part of your text or for any other use case you cannot write it because the markdown identify as its own syntax and tries to convert it but in order to get the actual result you need to use escape character in our case it's a backslash so it would be like looking like this next we have tables for the tables it's a quite different syntax than any other markdown syntaxes so for the columns operators we use pipes and for the first line separator we use pipes iphones so for the header column is always bold and center line for the data column it's always left aligned in order to change the alignment you need to use colon so in case of the center alignment colon hyphen colon in case of the left alignment which is default colon hyphen in case of the right alignment hyphen colon table which was shown previously here as a symbol and syntax the exact code is been here so the for the header we use pipe symbol pipe syntax and the next will give the percent aligned data columns so for that we use pipe colon hyphen colon pipe and we follow the content data columns are also been separated with pipes so which would result a perfect table create a new file tables dot markdown first of all we need to create the table headers so let's say headers as a title or the serial number let's say serial number and name so serial number and name in case of tables we need to use pipe as a separator so let's say pipe serial number pipe and closing pipe and in order to recognize this one as we need to use hyphens this hyphens will be used only for the first row so pipe hyphen pipe hyphen closing so it comes as now you write as a data so one one and name let's say round and closing pipe two let's say lakshma and closing right by default the header columns are center aligned and bold in nature but in case of the data columns by default data is left aligned for any reason we want to make it as right aligned or center aligned or default which is left aligned by force it you need to use colon like this you need to use both like this all three needs to be the same line hyphen colon and pipe now data is represented as right aligned let's say numbers are center aligned in case of the center aligned you need to use hyphen colon in middle like this now it's a center line if you provide only left one then it's a left aligned pretty simple welcome back these are the two online editors which i like the most one the linger and another one is stack edit we are not going to discuss about all the features of these online editors but i will introduce to basic necessity which is writing markdown syntaxes let's start it i have opened dlinger in my browser and this is the default content that dlinger provides it this is for our easy uses and giving the a little brush up or refresh of our markdown syntax so here it will be used all the features that are supported in dlinger not only the basic features it has couple more additional features those also be listed here so this is our markdown text which they have given and this is how the preview will be very nice isn't it 
So if you see it here, the code blocks has some different uh, background color. Like this is because of this D-linger feature. And even the table has alternate rows has been highlighted. It's as simple as that. Let's copy the notes that we have prepared a moment, a few moments back. And I'm going to remove the entire default text and paste it. Here I have pasted and this is how it's going to be shown in Dlinger online editor. Now we're going to learn about stack edit that IO online editor. Right now I have opened stack edit that IO on my browser. And this is the interface, how it looks like. You can go through and explore much more later. Let's get start writing. Click on start writing button and it will open an online editor where you can see left side some interface, left side where the files are there and the editor and the preview. If your uh, interface is different than mine, it's okay. Maybe the site has been updated or I might have closed a few more. Let's copy the same content which our notes has been written into the stack edit editor. I just pasted from the notes and it's not working perfectly fine because of the additional spaces. Let's delete the additional spaces. So just I keep one line there and here removing the additional ones. Good. This looks better. And let me several additional spaces has come during copy paste. Okay, header syntax. So let's delete this line. Now it should start showing table. Yes, the showing table as we expected. So let me clean up rust as well. Yes, I cleaned up rust as well. So this is our actual markdown code and it's coming here. So one advantage here, few of the features directly will be shown here before it, before we check at preview, like headers, R, bold, italics, all will be shown on the fly, except few like tables are the features, uh, like slogans, but codes also will work in the same manner. So if we see it here, it automatically shown as a code. Let's write a code block here. For example, JavaScript. Console.com testing. If we see it, after entering a proper code block, it's already started showing JavaScript syntax highlighting. Let's write for Java. I'm finishing up the code block first. So it's a proper code block. Now start writing system dot out dot println. Testing. We see it. Java syntax has been already working, already showing exactly same as preview. This is one of the advantages of the live editors. Now, let's see a couple of the features if we want to completely work without any disturbance. If you want to see only preview, you just click on the readable mode so you can see it all the document at once. We start writing it, click on edit button again. If you want to write completely edit mode, or oh, this is turning off the navigation bar and completely edit mode, I believe this one, yes. So we can concentrate writing it, whatever we want to, whatever our notes that we can complete it. Once it is done, you can preview it. Or you can go with both left side and right side where you can write it and you can see it preview next to it. Thank you. Next, we have exporting Markdown content. Until now, we learned the Markdown syntaxes and we have written a sample Markdown 
file as well. Let's try to export the markdown file which we have written as a notes for this course itself and we'll try to export it as either HTML or PDF. These are the tools that are available for us Notepad++, Dlinger Online Editor or Stack Edit Online Editor. VS Code has several extensions to export the content as HTML or PDF but VS Code default extension doesn't have the feature as export. So we need to install additional extensions for exporting the markdown content. In this course, I'm not showing those options. But the one which I like the most is Notepad++ Markdown Viewer Export. I always use Markdown Viewer++ Play extension to export my content as a PDF. Let's see how we can export the content as PDF or HTML using Notepad++. I have opened Markdown notes which we have written a couple of minutes back in notepad plus plus and i have enabled the previewer so this is how our content looks like so this here is the table that we have it and the list and the slogan everything so simply click on export here as a html and it will ask you to where to download it let's download that one and let's see how preview pdf will be so I exported as HTML and PDF just now and let's view how those looks like. Here is the notes.html which was exported from Northwest Plus Plus. This is how the content looks like. It's a very simple plan. But it does its purpose that which it contains summarizes all the content into one place. Let's see how notes PDF would look like. This is our markdown viewer. Plus plus creates the PDF while exporting as a PDF. This is how Markdown Viewer plus plus creates a Markdown content as PDF. It's exactly similar as it's shown in the view. In the same manner, we have send option. Either you can send over the email as a text or HTML. The one which is shown here exactly the same way. Exactly same we have printer as well. Either you can send it to the printer or HTML clipboard. So under HTML will be copied to the clipboard. So I'm opening a new file and paste it. So entire content has been pasted as a HTML code. All markdown content has been converted into HTML code. And you can add styles as it required and shows beautifully. Let's get back. And then next, we have Dlinger and Stack Edit Online Editors. Both the tools support HTML and PDF, but in case of the Stack Edit, HTML export is free, but not PDF export. So here I'm going to use HTML export from the Dlinger and Stack Edit, but PDF only from the Dlinger, as I have not subscribed for PDF export. Here is the code which we have written and all the content. And there is an option called either preview or export. Both of them generate a similar one. So let's try preview and HTML. And you click on here as HTML, it shows is a very plain old, old style. So there won't be any styles that are applied. But if you preview as a styled HTML, where you can see the preview are the styles that are applied exactly similar to the markdown view exactly similar to dealing so here either you right click and save as or you can use directly export as similar and now let's see how pdf looks like this is how our markdown content looks like as a pdf applying style sheets of course it is black and white thing it's not a color thing it's a black and white thing but it solves our purpose so either you save it download it or you can use exactly the same features as html or style html or pdf and the markdown itself is nothing but when you click on it and you click on as a markdown it shows all your markdown whatever it's been written this for exporting purpose 
there is nothing difference. So you can use either PM and preview or the export both gives the same options. Both HTML and PDF is supported at Dlinger. In the stack edit also, it's the same content that we have written. Most like we copy pasted here. So this is how our preview looks like. So here to export it, click on this button where you have several options are available. One of them is export or import. Click on it and here you will as a export as a markdown. Of course, it's a copy paste only and PDF or sponsor one that means which are nothing but where we need to pay for. So that's, that's a subscription. So I don't have the subscription. I'm going to try only export as HTML. When I click on it, it asks for that in which style it has to be. So let's say style default one. And there are a couple of the templates that are available, but I'm going with the default one. I click on the file is open. So the content looks like this one. This is the export that was happened from stack edit. So as I mentioned, we can write the markdown content and we can use any of these tools to export it. That's all for now. Thank you. How we are going to use markdown at JIT Hub? JIT Hub is very famous version control system. At JIT Hub, we can create the issues or the enhancement tickets or several other. So how we are going to use markdown in such cases? JIT Hub supports markdown very well, either at the comments or at the preview or at the ticket syntaxing or the comments where you write for the conversations. Wherever you want to use it, use Markdown syntaxes and the content will be represented very nicely. In case of the tasks, you can provide the task name. In case of the issues, you can provide the issue number or the commit ID or you can use the smileys, very famous smileys like a laugh, sad, such kind of things. And you can mention any of the other JT Hub members using at the rate. All JD Hub links are automated. So if you provide a link automatically, it will be created. I have provided the link for the JD Hub Markdown documentation. What are the formats that are supported? All basic writing or formatting is same as our Markdown syntaxes, basic syntaxes which we have discussed. And few more additional will be there, which only supported at the JD Hub. I provide the links over here. You can go through them and learn better. Let's talk about a use case. As part of the use case, we are going to write a sample notes for our learnings, where we are going to use headers, paragraph, lists, slogan, and a table. Let's write it. Create a new file. Let's say notes dot Markdown, and we're going to use title as Markdown Learnings, and as a paragraph, Markdown is a simple language or simple way of writing documentation. So inside it, let's say markdown as bold so as i mentioned double asterisk and simple way as italic okay single asterisk so if you see it in the preview markdown become bold and simple way as the italic and this is how we write the paragraph you can write any length of text after that Let's write a list. So let's give a title for it. So I'm going to use three headers, which is PHS. And here I'm going to use unordered list. So asterisk, let's say headers and text formatting, slogan, Let's write a slogan here. Doing is learning. 
three dots. Let's write a table. And for the table, so let's give a title for it. Headers syntax. Let's create a basic table having two columns, so three pipes, and the first name will be syntax and description. Or let's say output description, let's say description itself and iPhone iPhone. Now tables layout is been ready. So let's write. So syntax for that one I need to use inline coding. So single so hash h1 and this one results to header one and closing pipe. Let's copy the same. Paste, 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 paste. The total of six. Let's say header two, header three, header four, header five, and header six. And the syntax for the header two is two, and header three as three, header four as four, header five as five, header six as six hash. Let's give the separations so far easy reading. So let's correct the descriptions as well. Two, header two, header three, header four, header five, and header six. Let's say all these headers are left aligned. Let's make them as right aligned. So how we are going to do it? Right align as colon on the right side. Voila. This is a very sample use case and you can use it for anything. Next, we are going to discuss about the presentations, the current presentation, which you are seeing using the mark chains. There are several other markdown presentations, softwares are available at internet. These two, which I like the most, RemarkJS and RevealJS. Both are freeware and open source. So you can follow the links which were provided here and I can show you. You can learn from the official documentations and the links has been provided here on this slide. For the RemarkJS which I have created, I can show you how easy it is. Let's go to the JD Hub for the RemarkJS. I have opened RemarkJS at JD Hub. And if you see it, all we need to do is, here is the one. We need to exactly copy paste it and you can start writing your markdown syntaxes within the body tag, which is nothing but the text area source. So this will provide basic markdown presentation. You can follow the official documentation for adding more content to it or for the styling purposes. There are several themes that are available as a open source, you can find them easily over the internet. Here, we just write our markdown content within this text area. That's all we need to do. Rest of things, RemarkJS would show us a nice presentation. Next, we have RevealJS. I have provided the official link on the slide for the RevealJS and JDHub link as well. I have opened RevealJS at JDHub. And you can follow the documentation which they have mentioned at the JAT Hub to create the slides. If you want to see the slide representation, if you want to see the demo slides, just click on the demo slides at about section. Just click on it, it takes to the official site. Let's go back to the remark chairs and I will show you the slides that I have prepared using remark chairs. I'm going to open the remark chairs content in Visual Studio. I have opened Markdown presentation which was written in RemarkJS at Visual Studio. So this is all our my content which I have written for this slide. 
I have added additional series as it is required at my slides. Congratulations for completing the course. Now we have learned the markdown tools and use cases. Doing is learning and please keep practicing. With practice, you would be comfortable with markdown syntaxes and can write the markdown content with ease. And last but not least, please provide your valuable feedback. Your feedback would help me to improve the quality of the course and the content in every aspect. Once again, thanks and please keep practicing. All the best.